I don't always catch a 10 and a half pounder, but when I do, it's with wired to fish. Hey everyone, it's John with the Bass Tank here on a cold, almost winter Oklahoma day. I haven't been out here since I was a kid actually, so I've never been out here to actually try to, to go after these monster bass that we catch in the winter time. You know, the first thing we did, we put in here, we idled around a little bit and it's, it's a cold day. It's 32 degrees right now, water's at 44. We think that it'll probably get up to about 50 today. Bluebird skies today, it's gonna warm up in about the 50s. So right now we're kind of plugging around. The fish that we saw with our electronics, they're sitting on the bottom, uh, very few and far between. We've got A-rigs, jerk baits, underspins, uh, spoons, kind of your typical suspended fish baits that you'd throw in the wintertime. And the only group of fish that I've been able to see so far utilizing the live scope technology is a group of fish that are just kind of hugging the bottom and they're kind of sharking around. So what we're basically going to do is at the moment I've lightened everything up and I'm going to just try to keep that A-rig real close to the bottom. Try to look, look for those fish. I'm going to scout for those fish with my live scope. And once I find them, I'm going to throw it past them and slowly reel it by their head and keep that bait really close to the bottom, really close to where they're at. See if we can get them up to kind of at least come up and, and attack that A-rig. Here he comes off the bottom, you see that? Oh, it's a big one. It's a big one. He's on the bottom, just slowly reeling over its head. And he came off, I saw him come off. Oh, bro, it's a freaking giant. It's a giant. Look at him on the live scope fighting. Look at that. See? Oh. Maybe I got me a catfish or a stinking whale of a bass, bro. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Game on. He's a baby. I got a baby. <laughs> oh. Oh my goodness. Oh God. What do you call that? Is that a loggerhead? Whew. Oh my goodness, dude. She was, we've been having a hard day. Can't see them suspended anywhere like we need to be. Found some bait and in 20 foot of water, they're on the bottom. So I just reeled that thing slowly, slowly, slowly on the bottom. I think we got a little bit of footage of her just coming up. And I mean, she smoked it. Oh, good night, dude. Let's see how much she weighs. Oh, bro. Oh, my gosh. Holy cow. We got a 10, bro. Oh. I told you you were going to get something. Pretty girl, dude. Biggins. <laughs> Come to your daddy. Come to your daddy. <laughs> I told you they was biggins. I told you they was biggins. <laughs> oh well. This is the baby of the day, you know. I mean that's <laughs> 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 I don't think she'll go eight. I think she's a solid six and three quarters though. Well, it's six and a half. Nah, bit, she's getting smaller. <laughs> she logged in at 663 there. What do we got? Two fish for about 17 pounds? <laughs> 
<laughs> two fish for 1728. Wow. Well, I don't, it's not a midday update. I don't even know what time it is. We've been out here for an hour and a half, two hours. First little bit of time wasn't that good. Went in some flats, couldn't see the fish. We got here, we got on some bait, which was we need to see. And we started throwing that A-Rig out, 21 foot of water, just bring it along the bottom. And we got a monster earlier. We got a 1060, 1070 in the live well. And then uh, this girl right here, she was wolf packed for with about four or five others. I think we got that on video for you. And uh, brought the A-Rig over her head when she came in and smoked it. So I'm gonna get back after it. The, the sun's gonna warm with this water. The fish are gonna get a lot more active by the end of the day and they may get out of this deep hole and push into the flat. So we're gonna take advantage of when we got them corralled right now, try to make hay when we can, see what kind of sack we can turn this into. Right now we got two fish for 1728. So <laughs> we're on a good pace. Yeah, so when I see a fish, what I do is I feather, I feather sweep. I get on it and I just do little sweeps left and right. And I get lined up where I get that perfect return. That cone is 20 degrees and as it grows out farther, it gets a bigger, you're looking at a bigger area. So I wanna make sure that I'm putting this jerkbait right on top of their head. So I'm gonna feather sweep until I get the highest return. And that way I'm putting it right on top of them. He's not that big. He's a little guy. Oh man, he then he just come and just good tournament fish, All right? Good tournament fish. We're we gonna we're gonna put him in the small box, which is uh, back in the lake. But man, it was cool. Small fish, but cool. He was up high, threw a jerk bait at him a couple times. He didn't pay me no attention. And uh, I finally put an A-Rig on him and he he spun. And I mean, the first time I thought he ate it, but he didn't eat it, he missed it. So I just kept on slow reel and he came back and said hello. So we get a lot of questions about perspective mode and about searching. You hear a lot of what I'm gonna call false reports about how LiveScope's not a search tool. And if you know how to use LiveScope correctly, it's 100% a search tool. Now perspective mode, it's wider, it shows a bigger angle, but it only goes down to about 10 feet. So everything below this depth, we really wouldn't be able to pick up, none of that bait or anything like that. So as you can see, my troll motor head is faced this way, and I'm seeing about 20 degree angle forward for 75 feet. Now what I do is we call this, you know, we call it sweeping. So we sweep an area, and I'm able to search this whole area out, bait, 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 nothing, more bait. Now, I don't see a fish, so I've moved the troll motor, and there's actually a big fish right there, right there on the bottom. So I was able to search this whole area and find this guy right here. And those are the guys we've been able to target. So it's a 75 foot area, and I just scanned 160 degrees pretty easily to cover an area. And so now, because I've been practicing my orientation stuff, I can stay within <clears throat> really accurate of that fish. So, you know, I can bring my lure down to it, engage, come right across his head. Non-responsive. Oh, there he is! And that's how you use live scope for a search tool. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Searching for bass, using LiveScope. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't search with LiveScope. Put in the time, put in the work. It's control, boat control, sweeping, orientation. Very important factors. If you want to get good with your LiveScope, you want to chase big fish, you want to hunt them, you've got to put in your time and learn how to sweep with LiveScope. It's, it's extremely important when you're throwing an A-Rig to get the right rod. And, you know, over the years of throwing it, uh, I've caught, you know, multiple big fish, and I've gone through my time periods of losing fish. I've, I've thrown, you know, a lot of braid, a lot of lot, light line, uh, a lot of heavy rods, too heavy, too stiff, and then too limber. And so really the key is to find a rod that's got some flexibility so when that big fish surges on these light hooks, it doesn't pull it out, but it's got enough backbone 
that you can actually hook into them and, and enough leverage to control that fish. And the only way to actually do that with leverage is to get a longer rod. And this Denali Lithium 710 crankbait rod is the rod for me when I'm throwing an A-Rig. I have been able to put this thing, it's got a lot of flexibility. So when I'm trying to roll cast around a dock or anything of that nature, I can have that accuracy. And, <clears throat> but it's got that leverage. So when that big fish hooks in, I'm able to control it and, and move that fish around without over, over, you know, horsing that fish and pulling those hooks out. And it's extremely, extremely, extremely important. I'm in love with this rod. I think you will be too. Once again, it's the Denali 710 crankbait rod. No, they don't. He coming too. Man, these fish were up high, and we had to work them, work them, work them, work them, and work them, and work them, and work them. Not a, not a giant, but good fish. Man, we had to leave that jerkbait pause in front of its face, and it had a buddy with it, about the same size. And I mean, we just let the boat drift probably another 20 feet, and let that jerkbait sit in front, and we just kept on slowly popping, and then a couple quick pops. And then two or three real quick ones. And then I started seeing the fish is reacting and staying with it. So as long as that fish is staying with it, I'm going to keep popping it a little bit faster. And every once in a while, I'll give it a pause and see if it's going to dart to it or if it stays back. If it stays back when I pause, then I'm going to move it a little bit. And it, if it stays with it, then I'm going to keep moving it. So you just match the speed and the, and the action of that fish. If he's really lazy and slow, be a little lazy and slow, but give him something to think about. And if he reacts to you, keep him coming. And that's a, uh, and that fish, I don't know, that was a good 30, 45 second cast, I would imagine, on that fish. Maybe a, maybe more of a minute just right, holding that jerkbait right in front of that fish. Oh, there we go. Nice. She's gonna eat it. She ate it. After all that, did you see that? <laughs> she didn't have a hook in her, man. She just had it all sideways inside of her mouth. She's pretty. She, I think she's gonna call. We got us a little cold fish. Man, we, how long have we gone without getting bit? A couple minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so we need us a, I love these scales by the way. Well, 246, she's gotta go, I don't know. I don't think so. Think so? She got the mouth of it. Oh my goodness, you are so good. 
297. <laughs> this is my first time. I'm just figuring this thing out. Hey, is 2638 any good? Uh, this is my right. first time. <laughs>